Welcome to Season 4 of E-Commerce Fastlane. This podcast helps resilient entrepreneurs thrive with Shopify. And now, on to Episode 129. You are listening to E-Commerce Fastlane, the podcast show to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Listen to real conversations with partners and subject matter experts as they share proven practical strategies, platforms, and the best Shopify apps to help you accelerate your business. The time is now for you to improve efficiencies, grow revenue, profit, and lifetime customer loyalty. Please welcome your host, startup founder and strategic advisor, Steve Hutt. This episode is brought to you by Caro, the number one Shopify app for influencer marketing. Caro is a Shopify app that discovers all the influencers who are your brand's customers, email subscribers, and fans. Now imagine an influencer with a million followers was to make a purchase from your Shopify store. Would you know about it? Caro makes sure that you do. And unlike other influencer platforms, Caro is built for trust and transparency. And they help you find influencers that are genuinely interested in your brand so that you're not scrolling through countless social accounts just to find the right partners. Let Caro do the heavy lifting and find influencers that are best for your brand. And Caro also helps you execute your influencer marketing every step of the way. They make communication and product distribution easy so you can pick the right influencers and create meaningful partnerships. And right now, Caro is free for all Shopify stores. So why not try it out and see who you find? Now, after you install the app, Carol will alert you whenever a new influencer engages with your brand so that you can communicate and continue to build your list of influencers over time. To get started, you can visit getcaro.com or you can search for Carol in the Shopify app store. That's C-A-R-R-O and discover which influencers already love your brand. Well, hey there, it's Steve, and welcome back to the e-commerce fast lane podcast. Now, if this is your first time listening, this is an e-commerce show where we have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. New episodes are available twice weekly with your favorite podcast player through Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, and many more. You can also stream current episodes, including a very relevant back catalog directly from ecommercefastlane.com. I'd also highly recommend that you sign up for my free SMS texting community. It's an incredible opportunity to have direct access to me. No hidden agendas, no distractions, just honest two-way communication that's direct and instant to me, directly to my phone. I love giving back to the Shopify entrepreneur community. And if being on the front lines of this commerce revolution is for you, you can text me now, 604-210-4199. Now, my guest in today's episode is Amrit, who's the co-founder and chief operating officer from Acquire. That's Acquire, A-C-Q-U-I-R-E dot I-O. Now, what they are is they're a conversational customer experience platform, and we'll dig into the specifics of what the platform and new Shopify app actually does, but it really does help brands ride this next wave of customer experience. The platform just enables Shopify brands essentially to the customer conversations into one ongoing relationship. It's quite interesting, and which then, I guess, allows them to focus more on helping grow the business and wowing customers. So it's a really neat platform. I'm excited to have Amr on the show today. So welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Thank you, Steve, very much for the kind introduction. I mentioned a little bit at the top of the show here, but let's talk more on a high level first about what Acquire does and the problems, uh, I'm sure this iterates over time, but what sort of problems uh, does your platform and this new Shopify app solve for Shopify brands? Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a great question, Steve. And, you know, first and foremost, you know, Acquire is a, it's a digital first, all in one customer engagement platform, you know, like, like you mentioned, that brings together the real time communication for, you know, sales and support agents with everything they need for a successful digital customer experience. And, you know, we do it because it really shouldn't have to be that difficult when you're trying to bring together your customer communication across channels. But unfortunately, it, it happens It happens everywhere. I remember a long time ago, I was trying to actually rent a car and, you know, it was very frustrating. And I was at the airport and I wanted 
say the names brand specifically, but I had spoken to this brand. I called them. I went on their Facebook. I emailed them. And finally, when I got them on the phone, they had no idea I'd even tried to message them via Facebook. They had no idea that I'd even sent them an email. And I had to get transferred. I think two or three times they transferred me to a different different department. It, and it's not common. It's, it's very common that this happens, you know, all the time. And, you know, as customers, we're very, very subject to repeating ourselves constantly. At this point in time, when we think about Shopify brands, you know, especially at this time where retail from our perspective has changed drastically. And Acquire really is there to connect e-commerce businesses with their customers, where at this point they are simply the most distant from one another. And over the past 12 months, it has changed drastically. E-commerce has also, in that time, become one of the fastest growing um, sales channels almost ever, you know, which also means there's more competition out there. And in order for brands to really stand out and kind of be more competitive, we really have to step up their customer experience. And, you know, we know Shopify is, is a great platform in order to do that. But I really feel Quiet takes that experience and that journey a lot more further, and, you know, at a time where customers in many places just cannot walk into stores anymore. Yeah, and that's one thing. That's the reason why I have you on the show today, because it's a recurring theme that I've been happening um, all January. Um, and now we're, it's, well, February 1st now. Um, it's so interesting that these are the sort of conversations that, that brands are having. They're trying to figure out how can I completely own the customer journey? How can I understand where they're interacting and communicating through this multi-channel world that we're in? I mean, even from a marketing strategy, customers don't go from the top down anymore in, in the traditional marketing funnel. They're all over the place. That's why this, they talk this multi-touch attribution and all the problems that are going along with marketing strategy. It sounds like it's a very similar opportunity that's happening in your sphere of the customer experience side is that they're all over the place. And, and how do you get a unified view of the customer and their interactions with a brand? Correct, correct. You know, what we've seen in retail, from, from our perspective, the kind of pandemic hit, you know, and all these customers stopped going to stores, they couldn't go to them, and businesses were left with, okay, if our customers are not coming to our stores anymore, hang on a second, where are they? And how do we talk to them? So, you know, that was a scenario that we faced quite a lot in, in the retail you know, industry specifically was where are our customers? Okay, actually, our customers are replying to our Instagram ads. They're replying to our Facebook messages. They're on the phone. They're on email. In many cases, they're even on WhatsApp. So we have definitely seen that kind of drastic shift of your retail companies trying to figure out where their customers if, they, if they're not in their store. <laughs> So let's talk about your journey. I'm always fascinated why people build the products and services that they do. And, you know, there's always a story behind that about why it happens. Are you able to share the listeners, I guess, what uniquely positions you and your co-founder, I guess, on a couple points, number one, to have the desire and number two, to have the expertise to want to create this platform? It's interesting because it also stems from online sales, actually. Ram, who's the, who's the other founder, CEO, you know, he had a software development company. I had an online printing company. And this is going back a few years now, Steve. And one thing I had on this online printing company was people could edit business cards online and also purchase them. And for the listeners, I'm not sure how many people order business cards today, but it's, it's a wide array of uh, specifications on paper. For example, you could have 400 GSM paper, 600 GSM, matte lamination, gloss lamination. And I think when I left, they introduced something called velvet lamination, which I can't remember how that was, but you know, it's, it's sold. And what we had was a lot of people dropping off on the website, a huge drop off. You know, they would go to the editor, they, they try to pick the spec they wanted and then they'll leave. And I said, Ram, I said, we have to, we have to put a live chat on the website. I got to be able to talk to my customers while they're dropping off. So we saw live chat and we started talking to customers. And then we realized that, hang on a second, we have to keep sending them like go to meeting links. Uh, we'd ask them to come on Skype or TeamViewer. And we would say, you know, if we could just see your screen and take you through the product design and the specification, you know, that'd be great. And that, that really didn't work. Nobody wanted to kind of go through the buying cycle and then have to download another software in order for you to kind of just support them through that process. Maybe one, 2% of customers did that, but did really say yes. And that's what kind of led us to thinking, okay, you know, is there anything out there that really encompasses that, you know, personalization and that in-person experience online effectively? 
and there wasn't really much. So, you know, Ram being more on the software and product side, you know, three months later, he turns up in my office and he's like, you know, hey, check this out. And, you know, that was, when was that? End of 2016. And that was the first version of Acquire or what it is today. And, you know, we both thought it was cool. And we was like, let's make a website and let's see if other people want it. And then, you know, slowly, slowly, we had people signing up to our product. And when people started signing up, I was like, shall we try sell it? And then I remember the first price point we ever put on Acquire was $39 per month per user. So yeah, it definitely comes from a pain point. And that whole engagement, you know, personalization was key to kind of how we've now driven the product forward. You know, it started there, having that real-time experience on the website, which a lot of our customers use today. But then as, as time evolved and as, you know, customer communication evolved, you know, the product has definitely changed since then as well. Yeah, I've noticed that too. And I have a few brands that have made the choice to use Acquire. What's interesting is you have a feature and I think what you're talking about was this co-browsing feature, which I think was quite unique. So live chat is a pretty standard thing that um, even Shopify has live chat through ping. And there's lots of different solutions out there that are available. But that's kind of where that engagement kind of ends. You know, you can bolt on a chat bot, maybe help through a self-serve model, uh, be able to answer some of the most common questions. Where's my tracking number? How long for delivery? Some basic kind of things. But yours opens up a lot more where it's an all-in-one, a very unified kind of agent view, I think you call it. But I love the co-browsing. Obviously, live chat's a necessary thing. A chat bot is necessary, in my opinion, just to add a little bit of pulse to the website. I find whenever I show up to a website, it's one of the first glaring weaknesses I see as soon as I do um, a website audit. If I, if I see there's not a chat bot running, even if you don't have the manpower to run it, at least have a chat bot running to at least direct some of the traffic over. But you do a lot more than that. You have tons of integrations and a shared inbox for the customer success team and, you know, connecting a voice over IP systems. It's so interesting how you're trying to understand that you're going to build a lot of the technology, but you're also playing really nice with others in technology that they may have as part of their tech stack. Correct. Yeah, we, we've done a lot of work in integrations. I think, you know, at this point, I believe we have over 60 integrations and, and continuing to really, really focus in on that as well. So let's uh, talk about the climate right now. I mean, 2020 was certainly uh, changed a lot of things uh, for retail and for e-commerce. And, you know, I think we're still literally going through a lot of fundamental shifts. You see a lot of big box and large retailers going bankrupt. You see these other kind of venture backed companies. Uh, like Rev brands and other ones that are scooping up these brands and, and making them, quote unquote, now newly digitally native now, direct to consumer because their retails have collapsed. So interesting. And we're all aware of all of this stuff. So from your perspective, like what trends did you see that emerged because of what we're involved in right now with this pandemic? And what do you believe is going to stick around uh, in 21 and beyond? Yeah, you know, when I when I think about kind of, and um, once again, kind of from what we've seen from the company perspective, and I feel as a company, we've been really at the forefront of kind of how digitally things are changing with brands and businesses. You know, more than ever, customers are shifting to online purchasing, especially necessary items. And, you know, they're popping from all different types of channels, you know, which has made it challenging for a lot of companies. I think we all have that one person in our life who's probably, you know, going online for the first time to actually even do shopping. You know, I know my parents have been going, you know, they're, from, they're in London, they've been going to their local, like, uh, grocery store for the past 20, 30 years, and now they're having to do it online, you know? So we, it's definitely shifting in that sense. You know, for us, e-commerce companies, when we, when we go back, like, you know, 12 to, to 18 months, and when, when e-commerce companies would approach Acquire, you know, they really would ask us, they'll be like, hey, we're, we're looking for, we want to go beyond chat. You know, that was the thing that, you know, maybe they had chat or they, or they didn't have chat. And in the case, if they had live chat, they would be like, how do we go beyond that? They would say, we want the live chat, we want the live video, we want the co ability. And that's what they would kind of ask us like 12 to 18 months ago. And, you know, we still have that today. Um, they still are, we still get requested for that, you know, heavily. But in addition to that, it's really been about, you know, how do we tap into the, the social channels? You know, how do we tap into, you know, WhatsApp? How do we kind of tap into to Instagram, for example? A, a lot of them have been asking us, 
how do I have cross-functional communication? And, and what I mean by that, Steve, is actually me and my partner being very fortunate. You know, we, we, we bought a car the other day, but, you know, I would start the live chat on the website and, you know, I don't, I don't want to sit there for two, three hours. And then we would convert that live chat into an, an, an SMS. And it was funny how every single appointment that I booked through the automotive dealers were through both through SMS. So, and, you know, that is a huge demand that we, we, we have and that we're facilitating at, at this moment. From our perspective, what, you know, that is what we've seen how Ask has changed from retailers. You know, we've seen buy behaviors rapidly shift and, you know, the response to those behaviors has kind of led to long-term challenges in, in how we serve customers. For some segments, like it was as simple as getting online. I remember we had a customer sign up on a Sunday and one of our SDRs was Amrit. They seemed to be in a bit of a rush, you know, a year to demo the product. And at this point, I hadn't demoed the product for about a year now. <laughs> I was like, do you know what? I'll do it. You know, I get on the phone to this customer on the Sunday and he's like, Amrit, we have never invested in digital. All our stores are closing on Tuesday. We need to get going. And I was like, okay, here's the invoice. That's one change we've seen is, you know, just businesses trying to get online and the types of businesses, I would say the type of e-commerce businesses, there's, they're managing different demand fluctuations. I think in the early days, uh, it may have been like necessities, like, you know, paper towels and stuff like that. As it kept going further and further, I knew I couldn't, I couldn't get a hold of weights for like three months. I was trying to buy a bicycle online and I couldn't get it for like five months. <laughs> but I guess what we're seeing in the online market is, is a huge demand fluctuation in different different segments. And it's reflecting in the type of customers who, who reach out to us and kind of want to actually really digitally trans- transform their customer communication. How about the logistics side of things? Have you thought a lot about or has there been any conversation about this kind of last mile delivery or just all the massive delays of just the, the standard carriers and kind of... and, and how that landscape is changing. Last mile delivery has, you know, has definitely changed. And, you know, what I've seen the most and personally experienced is curbside pickup. It's, it's very hard to get that last mile or, or it might be delayed. So I know like the bigger chains, um, like even Walmart and stuff, they started doing curbside pickup. I, you know, bought some furniture from West Ham where I did a curbside pickup, or, you know, because um, it, was, it was small enough to fit in the vehicle. But th- that has been a key thing. And, and, and I do feel that will continue. Most definitely, I do feel the efficiency that customers are seeing and, and businesses are seeing for curbs, curbside pickup will continue uh, consistently as well. But logistically, yes, the, the last mile has been challenging and I, and I have seen a lot of brands move to curbside pickup. I know Shopify literally paused the whole uh, projects that we were working on as soon as COVID hit. And that was one of the core features that was brought out right away that people were asking for. Like, how do we buy online and pick up in store? Um, how do we do curbside pickup? How do we connect to some of these last mile carriers, these local carriers? There were some great solutions that were released. I mean, I had one case study where a brand that I was managing, uh, so they had a subscription, kind of a beer company. They were doing well, but they were part of a restaurant, a large restaurant franchise uh, through the US, like 30, 35 locations. So all of them closed. Then they come to me and said, okay, we need to make a pivot. Yes, beer is important. So the alcohol market was still, was actually massively grew over, over the pandemic and still doing quite well. But they said, you know, we need to get basics out to people as quickly as possible, either directly or curbside pickup. And so they created food packs. And so because their restaurant was still able to buy all of the food, they just were very uh, innovative and resilient. And they just made these different types of like, that's pizza night, it's burger night. And they would give you all of the things that you needed because a lot of the grocery stores we know were kind of empty. Uh, or it was challenging to get into them because of social distancing. And so this company built these packs up. They launched, and then I got an email back to them, like, you know, kind of post first wave of COVID. And they said, you know what, Steve, it's because of Shopify and it's be- kind of how we put together this, this opportunity, creating something unique that the market demands and the technology to do it. You actually saved our company because it was. Not a lot of money. It was like under a million dollars over a three-month period. But you know what? It was revenue with lots of profit, but it was needed in the community. You know, yes, it was layoffs. Fair enough. It was, you know, we have 35 locations. You can appreciate lots of layoffs. However, the company is still resilient now, and now they've opened back up again. And so it's really great that this is kind of where we're at today. No, that's great. That's a great story. You know, we've been very fortunate to work with, you know, retailers who, you know, we've been alongside since this happened. And, you know, what turned into like a, a, a quick solution is, is now like, you know, part of the strategy moving forward and the digital strategy moving forward. 
and I do see that continuing as we, as we, you know, hopefully go get past this phase. So let's talk about this customer experience because I know it's a topic that I bring up a lot. That's part of the initial kind of conversations I, I actually go through as a customer, go through the workflow and actually try to buy something, abandon browse, abandon checkout. Um, I see if there's a newsletter, I do all the basic things. I would suppose a lot of people listening today, they'd have a pretty decent understanding that there's a value to customer experience. So what on your side, because you're, you see the other side of it, because you're platform is solving a lot of these customer experience problems and the unified uh, experience overall. What sort of mistakes or misunderstandings do you believe maybe entrepreneurs make when it to deliver an amazing customer experience? You know, first when we deal with some some prospects, but you know, at this time and, and even customers, when it, when it comes to like customer experience, they first want to test it and they kind of want to design the solution around a specific use case. For example, you know, we have brands as well that come to us and say, hey, we only want to improve the customer experience for like our premium customers, just for the VIPs. We want to actually automate the rest and deflect them and send them to, you know, IVRs and, and online FAQs, right? So they're solving for a very particular segment, a very particular use case, for example. And when I think about this and at Acquire, we just don't feel this will cut it anymore. There's very little for error. At, at this point in time, you know, everyone has a voice on social media and, you know, reviews can have a major impact, you know, so you have to solve for customer experience before for your entire customer base. And the issue with kind of keeping it very much segmented is there's more businesses on online now than ever before. And if you're not trying to wow that customer, there's definitely somebody else that will. And that is where, you know, what we've seen is um, really trying to be focused and we really feel it should be it should be part of the company to do that the second thing that we we, we come across is you do some things to improve customer experience maybe you kind of you put on a chat on your website you, you unify some communication there's like this initial kind of success period and then people kind of get a little bit complacent you know and, and i'll come back to that point of you know if you invest in customer experience and you see, let's say, satisfaction improve or, you know, you see your conversions go up because experience is, is better, right? That initial success, it shouldn't just be about the initial, initial success. It, it needs to continue. So we see a lot of companies, what happens is it was great and it, it's not so great now. And they've also invested kind of less time on it on that side as well. Also, on, on the flip side is, you know, you invest in CX, you see some return, you don't see enough return. And then it's like, maybe we'll try it another day. You have to make a conscious decision as a business on how you want to show up online to your customers. And I think that's important is how do you want to show up online to all your customers is something that, you know, has to be part of your strategy as opposed to just, you know, we want to see if this works. You only want to do it for a certain number of customers. So these are kind of things that we come across, you know, ourselves as a company dealing with, you know, in the e-commerce and retail space. I understand that Acquire is really built for the mid-market to enterprise teams, like just because of the power of the platform. And I would say a lot of brands that are on Shopify Plus are probably in your sweet spot. They have they have product market fit. They've got doing upwards of a million dollars or more typically in revenue, you know, and then the sky's the limit. So what sort of recommendations can you share today that can set these stores up for success continue to grow and then, you know, out of that growth state, then into a scale state. I, I just would like to hear because I, I know you see a lot of the early stage brands growing that are doing really, really well. And then they continue scaling. And I would love to see like why they made the choice to adopt your platform and then kind of what you're seeing on your end. As we've seen your customers kind of in the mid market and, you know, as we see them kind of scaling, further and further, especially in the enterprise section as well, is initially really kind of, it's also being very, it's also building a really strong foundation and not doing too much where you don't succeed. Like example might be, you may start off with maybe, you know, 10 users or 20 users and you might start at chat. And then, you know, once you kind of have that kind of working, you then might escalate to more personalization through bots potentially. And then you kind of might go into the automation and the, the online help desk. And this is how we've seen customers in the in mid-market and enterprise kind of really improve their journey. And the one thing with the choir is 
it allows you to start that journey where you feel comfortable and allow you progress. We have a lot of customers, for example, where they've started off at chat and maybe Facebook Messenger. And maybe two, three months later, they're like, hey, we want to actually tap into the video and the cold browse. And then another time later, when they're ready for it, they might want to tap into even WhatsApp and SMS. So it's, it's really allowing, you know, first of all, understanding, you know, where do we start and what does, you know, a successful rollout and a successful customer experience look like at the end and kind of how do we get there? So when we see, you know, companies really scale with us, you know, this is how they, they typically scale over, over time. You know, one thing that Quiet offers, you know, for Shopify people specifically is within our widget is a dedicated Shopify app in the front and center, you know, before we even start a conversation. So this is kind of how we've seen people get to a place where the end result looks something like, number one, it's customers can potentially self-serve themselves if they would like. If they can't find, you know, the answer they're looking for, then you can escalate into like a chat session. If then you want to go to an extra personalization, you can escalate to like a, a video session or a cold browse. And it's really kind of building that journey. And for, for us, you know, that's why we've, we've built out a, you know, CX platform. It's, it's not just a series of, you know, digital tools that can serve as that foundation, but kind of ready to be part of your strategy and your e-commerce platform and CRM systems. So yeah, just kind of summarize, really going from where you want to define and having that journey throughout is typically how people scale with us um, in mid-market enterprise. I love that part that, you know, you can dabble a bit in some of the missing pieces of your customer experience uh, tech stack, and you can start expanding with the platform as uh, the needs and growth require it. And so I'd recommend those listening today. We'll give some links near the end of the show, but, you know, going to the Shopify app store and having a look, I think your plans start as low as $60 a month. So at least you're getting some, you know, quality live chat and some great features built into that solution, uh, which is competitive to the market. But then the long term is, can you imagine some of the extra I call them digital interactions, but other ways of being able to communicate with your customer. It's, it sounds like it's almost like a good doorway or a gateway to like, okay, you know, and I think that maybe that's why the Shopify app is there. It's like, let's get people to try it and get going on. And then from there, their mind gets expanded about, well, you know, what else can we do to really improve our experience? You know, we didn't have live chat. Now we do great. What else can we do now? Oh, well, look, look at all the things that acquire can do. And, and what happens in, in a lot of cases, Steve, is what we've seen is um, a, a retailer will, will buy a software, like maybe like a live chat software. And then at some point down the line, they'll be like, you know, we really want to invest in potentially, let's say, Facebook. We really want to speak to our customers on Instagram. And then they'll dedicate, you know, maybe a different person to speak to someone on Instagram. And then, the, you know, a retailer might be like, you know, we want live chat, but we want to start sending, sending, sending people Zoom links so we can actually do video with them as well. So there's, there's a lot of customers that we speak to as they kind of go down this journey. They end up with probably, I think, probably four to five different tools that they end up using. I think we had a, last week we had a customer, retailer, you know, they're using a different live chat tool. They were using something for co-browse. They were using a different tool for video. And if that didn't work, they'll use Google Meet. And then had somebody um, sitting on Facebook who would, who would reply to the messages and, and kind of, you know, allowing companies to really encompass all that in, in one place has been really, really powerful for, for what we've seen is because what you end up doing is buying four or five different tools, trying to integrate them, you know, as you kind of go down this, this customer engagement and experience journey. Yeah. One of the things I do a lot uh, with the brands I manage is do an app audit and it, it shocks me when I see a brand like... 50 or 60 different apps and they definitely solve unique problems but it also you know makes the platform a little bit bloated um, there's some speed problems that start happening because there's a lot of dependencies on a lot of third parties for that overall customer experience of speed and dwell time and the seo value of a slow website the conversion negatives of a slow site like there's a lot there's a lot of things that go wrong is i do an app audit and that's the first thing i do is say you know especially on a new brand i go Okay, let's take a look at all of these apps. And first of all, are you using them? A lot of times they're like, oh, we don't, don't even know it's even there. I guess it kind of, a, it's out of sight, out of mind kind of sort of thing. But I mean, it clean, I've had one brand where literally I say them off was $1,000 a month in apps they weren't even using. Multiple BI tools, uh, two email marketing platforms, all different things, you know, 
um, different team members coming and going and they're not realizing. That's important uh, to remember what you have from a tech stack perspective. It was interesting that I do the app audit, I see exactly what's available and then we really, you know, are there, not necessarily a Swiss army knife, but is there a more applicable one-off tool that can take, or like what is the problem we're solving? I see each one of these are solving unique problems, but is there a more of a holistic solution? And that's where maybe a marketing automation platform will come in, which will take care of some SMS and email and push and, you know, and these sorts of things. Whereas, and on your tools, the same way, how do we overall encompass, you know, co-browsing, live video, chat, looking up through like facts and, and, and documents and things like that. There's, there's a lot of stuff here, social interactions with, you know, and overall understanding the customer's journey. That's what you do. And I think that's exciting. For us, it's been a very you know, at this time, being at the forefront of really being part of that story between us and businesses and redefining kind of how they engage with their, with their customers um, has, been, has been incredible. You know, um, we are working with, you know, retailers like Samsung to really kind of help them improve kind of like their conversions online. You know, if you, automotive has also grown significantly, you know, Audi, we work with them on, on their website. They use it to kind of now showcase cars because people are not coming to to dealerships so we've been very fortunate to you know work with companies who have done the same thing for maybe even 50 to 100 years and kind of be part of like how they differentiate and think about what is next for us and and how do we continue to grow our business digitally and you know be up to date as well because you know for like hundreds of years there are people coming to like audi showrooms and all of a sudden they they can't come and, you know, we've been kind of part of that story as well. I'm not sure if you know this, but this show does have a diverse range of entrepreneurs. I mean, there's a, you know more than a million customers on the Shopify kind of core platform and 8,000 or more Shopify plus brands um, that more in the, you know, in the mid market to enterprise. And so because there's kind of a diverse range, plus some internal listings uh, inside Shopify. But from your vantage point, like what kind of advice would you give brands and store owners today they're eager to grow and scale, you know, do you have any kind of C's or any revenue growth kind of tips or hacks you could share today? When it comes to the customer experience um, specifically, you know, it really has to be part of your, your long-term strategy. Like it's, it's really got to be part of it. To get it right, you've got to be devoted to it. It has to be like something that, you know, as a business, this is what we want to do. We want to have great customer experience. You know, it, it's very easy to, you know, even 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 for us as a growing growing business, right? It's um, even especially in the early days, it's very easy to be like, "Whoa, that's my highest paying customer, right?" So that, that's the first we're going to focus on. But you know, letting your customer speak to you and removing that friction is is important. And just recently, as you know, I've been doing some online shopping for a few things. The first person who reaches the customer typically wins, and 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 how you go about doing that you know, has to be very intentional as well. That's something that I personally feel is, is key. I know kind of, especially like in, in SaaS, you know, we have these um, SLAs when a, a lead comes in, you know, speak to them in X amount of time, right? The the conversion rates are, are higher and it's definitely no different online. Like I, me and my partner, we bought a car recently. Uh, actually, we bought it the day before and somebody was texting me yesterday and they said to me, thank you for leaving your details on our website. We'll get in touch with you. <laughs> and I was like... Great timing. Uh, that is something that some some advice I'd, I'd I'd give to be the first person you know you know wins. <laughs> what do you think about personalization? It has it been a, has it has been on your radar at all about going to a website and finding that it almost feels like the operator, the owner of the brand, is purposely curating things more to their liking, or it doesn't seem like it's 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 a genuine display that's relevant to each individual user have, have you seen much on your side because obviously a lot of brands using acquire that are successful and maybe they've gone down that personalization road um through tools and whatnot but just was curious from your perspective because it's another topic that comes up quite a bit about how do i get this elusive kind of one-on-one -on -one kind of you know with machine learning or ai and like there's lots of things about personalization i was curious you know the known customer or the unknown customer how this journey all works. Yeah, so you know, with, with Acquire, if you're the CEO and e-commerce customer and you've purchased from that brand before, 
and let's say you you log into your account and maybe you're just kind of browsing you know some clothes for example if that customer logs in Villaquai specifically you can pick up the information and actually you know target you can send personalized messages to them hey steve so that you was looking at xyz you know is there any way kind of we can help right that is kind of like the the basics you know of personalization there and, and that has been effective that has been effective you know and with the unknown customers you know of course kind of we, you can shoot out messages based on their behavior on the website so maybe somebody has gone to five different product pages and now you want to kind of send them a tailored message you know that, that's something that we see very 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 common as well and i think part of personalization is also knowing how that customer has communicated with you when we look at the kind of the stats and kind of just you know industry you know statistics around what frustrates customers you know one of the one of the ways we see what frustrates customers is always having to repeat themselves so i think you know also when that customer does talk to you that you have the context relevant to that customer like you know if you are using the shopify platform for example and you start a chat and that customer has ordered from you five times you know in a quai you will see all their order history you know you will see suggestions and that is part of personalization as well is when they do eventually speak to you do you know who they are have them interact with your brand um etc cetera, etc cetera. and when we think about really really sophisticated like hyper personalization is you know when you you go on a like an amazon and you know it's going to automatically suggest product you didn't even know you knew and you know they have a ton of information about you and they must know you better than you in, in terms of to some extent but um it's a brilliant thing it's very hard for growing brands to get to that level of personalization but in terms of kind of where you can start and what is feasible and what you can do very quickly you know that is what I would I would say so what's the future look like for acquire are you able to share any north stars i guess for 21 and beyond i'm always curious about the partner alignment i know you've i've just checked like 60 some connections to a lot of the third parties but just curious about innovation just end of the day how are you going to continue to offer value and assistance for Shopify brands as part of their customer experience journey? Yeah, I think as a, as a company today, and when we kind of you know look at our product roadmap and you know speak to the customers that we have today, you know one thing that is very important is you know as we are having more and more conversations, as we are connecting to more and more different channels, like today retailers are asking us for like, hey, we really want to get on Instagram. I'm sure in a few years time it, they might even turn around and say we want to get our TikTok now. You know, so with all this kind of growing communication, one part that continues to come up is kind of how do we become a more efficient and operation efficient business as well, right? So at Acquire, you know, we are really heavily investing in, you know, what we call conversational AI and you know analytics to help brands provide even a better service. It's one thing bringing everything in. It's it's it can be very hard to manage and have everything in, but to automate some of that is going to be really powerful. So we're building it out, you know, from the platform, and so it's super obvious on how it provides value to agents, the company, of course, the end consumer, right? So you can add that number one, the customer may ask something, you can automate some of that. But in addition to that, you can also help your agents. For example, if a customer writes a question, and maybe an agent started two days ago. You can read that automatically. Give that agent suggestions as well, so then they become a lot more efficient as well. And the North Star with kind of conversational AI, you know, is is getting the platform so well tuned up to your business and your collective knowledge that it can di- directly get customers to answer, you know, questions quicker and enabling the agents to work more more efficiently. When we think about you know strategic partners like Shopify, you know they're also a big part of our future. You know, Shopify has become you know a a, a powerhouse kind of you know in the e-commerce environment. You know, our technology solutions are you know are often only as good as as their integrations, or, or in other words, you know the openness to to other solutions. You know, we want to continue to partner with you know innovative partners like Shopify, who are and will always be, I think, a really big part of this digital kind of revolution. So Amrit, we are nearing the end of the show for today, but would you like to share any takeaways or any next steps uh, you'd like to share with the listeners? Yeah, um, you know, first of all, thank you for your time, Steve. You know, it's been a pleasure. You know, I'd like to invite anyone that's considering, you know, a CX solution or curious about it in any way to come visit our website, you know, www.quire.io. You know, I'll leave you with this thought. You know, as I mentioned before, in terms of my journey and my, my partner, Ram's journey, 
we never will be able to be ever so we to have this much impact you know previously so i really do believe there's a, a lot of opportunity here for brands to create some really cool and unique coffee experiences online and you know as i mentioned it really doesn't have to be as complicated as I believe it should be it is very much of an accessible thing to be able to communicate with your customers across channels now we did speak offline before recording uh, today and i understand that you uh, have an offer for those that are listening in terms of the, the offer we want to kind of push out to uh, the Shopify customers is, you know, a, a 20% kind of reduction on the, on the cost to kind of help them. Uh, you either take a 20% reduction on the cost or you, we can add more seats for you as well. And it's all about kind of really trying to participate in this in this journey with e-commerce companies. You know, it, it has been challenging, so we are trying to do our part as well in terms of how we can help. And the cost is always, always one of the ones we can do something about. Beautiful. I have a couple links that I'm going to share in the show notes. So I uh, thank you for that offer. That 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 20% off is a great offer for those to uh, at least want to give the platform a test spin and see uh, as a starting point, strictly as a, as a as a chat solution, the platform will open up and you can see what else is available. I also have a link to you have an amazing resource center. I follow your blog. I think I even curate some of your content um, on e-commerce Fastlane. But I'll make sure I give that link. But the offer will be at ecommercefastlane.com slash acquire that'll go to a great link uh, landing page uh, so you can take uh, Aaron right up and his team up on that offer yeah this is great this has been a great chat I, I i know this is a necessary piece of technology that uh, customer experience is on people's minds it sometimes appears to be a little bit of a duct tape solution or siloed too much uh, too many people involved uh, versus no wait a second you've pulled back a bit and said no Here's overall how we believe customer experience is today and how it's evolving. And you've the full service platform now that can be expanded based on the needs of the customer, of the merchant, the Shopify brands or the star owner. So I just appreciate uh, kind of the journey you're on. And, you know, congrats on getting your Shopify app released in the app store. Um, hopefully we can get some people uh, to try it out and see the power of the tool. So thanks for, you know, sharing your knowledge and your vision today and just giving back to the ecosystem. Thank you very much, Steve. All right, take care. This episode is supported by Caro, an incredible Shopify app that discovers all the influencers, press, and media that already love your brand. They can be customers, email subscribers, or fans, and Caro will reveal the social footprint and influence of those that have already shown you some love. And from there, Caro makes it easy to work with influencers, communicate and distribute products to them so you can pick the right influencers and create meaningful partnerships. To get started, you can visit getcaro.com or search for Caro in the Shopify app store at C-A-R-R-O and discover which influencers already love your brand. Well, a few things before we end today's podcast. Because of the massive popularity of SMS, I've decided to create a free SMS texting community and it's an incredible opportunity to have direct access to me no hidden agendas just honest communication two-way with me as you can probably tell i love giving back to the shopify community and if being on the front lines of this e-commerce revolution is for you i'm here to assist in any way i can to help you in your journey with shopify you can text me now at 604-210-210 4199. Again, that's area code 604-210-4199. And you'll be able to communicate directly with me. I think this is going to be a really cool initiative and I'm really excited on how this is going to evolve. I'd also like to thank you personally for being a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms all with my personal goal to help you build, manage, grow, and scale a successful and thriving company powered by Shopify. Thank you again for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week. Make sure you text me 604-210-4199. And remember, keep thriving with Shopify.